The PL Show is brought to you by Kel Chaco, Kel 360, and Kel Kids Toothpaste. She's a sister, she's a friend, she's a mother, she's a feminist, and she's a journalist. She's also the host of the longest running advocacy talk show in this country. My guest today is one when you encounter, you will never leave the same, and I can't wait for you to meet her. In the meantime, you're welcome to the PL Show. I am Kemini. Amano. The PL Show is brought to you by the Kel Toothpaste brands, Kel Kits, Kel 360, and Kel Chaco. Kel Happy Smell. My makeup is by the African American Beauty Academy and Spa. You're right in time for today's edition of the PL Show. And I have been going on and on about our guest today because she is really that important. Did I also mention that she is the first lady of Akwemu Edumasa. Please help me welcome from your living rooms. Clap, clap and help me welcome Ohenere Gifty Auntie. I'm happy to see you. I'm Good happy to, to see you too. Good to see you. <laughs> How did I do in introducing you? Very well, but you forgot one thing. What did I forget? You are my younger prodigal <laughs> sister should have i should one. have you're welcome please <laughs> take a you. seat thank you so much the last time we met mm -hmm. was about four years ago in 2019 yeah 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 that's so bad you? very uh, that's why i'm prodigal <laughs> that's why no i follow you on social media and i'm me so too. proud of me you me too well and done i look up to you a lot so. Uh, and and it was one of the reasons that yeah. I had to change my name at some point yeah. because I do you know she's <laughs> she's gifty yeah so this she's is a gifty this is a gifty gifty, gifty. conversation <laughs> and let know. me give up uh, give out you know <laughs> another secret so two years ago I go to Germany Hamburg and I found out that her sister is also like a younger sister to my big sister. Yes. <laughs> in Hamburg. Imagine that. The world is such a small place. <laughs> yes, it is. So that's why we need to be careful. And be kind to each other. Absolutely. And, and that's something that you have done so well for, mm -hmm. you know, all people of this country, especially young girls. You try. Because when I started watching you make impact, mm -hmm. it was a long time ago and you're still here. We are grateful to God for that. Four years mm -hmm. ago, we said mm -hmm. we'll bring you here. Yes. And it's taken that long. Long. For, yes. <laughs> for us to bring you here. So you're yeah. welcome. Special Thank you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor. You're Thank watching you. the PL show. When we come back, we'll start our conversation proper with Oheni Yere. Mommy. Michelle, ah, fe fe ah, hmm, <laughs> Different era, better result. Time has changed, and time has brought Cal charcoal toothpaste, healthy gums, anti-cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Kale Chocolate Toothpaste, Sankofa, Yenchi, Kale Chocolate Toothpaste, Happy, Happy Smile. Smile. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back to the PL Show. My guest today is someone who is dear to my heart. A lot of people say that you really don't need introduction and I agree with them <laughs> because the things that you have done you know, they, they, they set the table before you get there, so people mm -hmm. already know you. But where does the Gifty Auntie story begin? I have a complicated, you know, um, story. I was conceived at Aflao, mm -hmm. born at Chebi, raised in Tema. <laughs> that combination. <laughs> yeah, yes, but I, I've lived in Tema. I'll say all my life because mm -hmm. I still live in the Tema area. My father, may he rest in perfect peace. And my mother, you know, my father was an Achim. 
my mother a fine tea. My mother and father separated or they I'd be divorced when I was very young. Mm -hmm. So my whole life was spent with my dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was raised by a man, single father, <laughs> you know, until I was about 35 when he died in 2005. But I had a good relationship with my mother as well, mm -hmm. especially during the latter days. I schooled in Tema, um, Community 8, number one primary and middle school. Went to Infant My Girls Secondary School. Went to GIJ for my mm -hmm. diploma in um, journalism. Then followed up by City University in London for my master's in international journalism. journalism. And I've been working since then. I'm the last of eight children mm -hmm. and we're very close. I was daddy's spy. You know, <laughs> I remember um, those. I love to sing, you know, I, I just love music. And so I would sing proudly and my sisters would laugh at me mm -hmm. and say that I have a horrible voice. Then I run to my dad, go and complain, hoping that my dad would tell me, don't mind, at least you can sing. My father never did. Mm -hmm. Every time he said, don't worry, at least you can talk. Sometimes he said, okay, you go to the bathroom, just turn on the shower ah. and sing. <laughs> we were very close. Mm -hmm. My first menstrual cycle, my dad was the one I told. Yeah. When I was at infants, my girls secondary school, when boys used to write to me, I'll send it to my dad. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he would, you know, edit it and send it to him, tell me to post it back to them. And then when I got to form three, the letters stopped coming. My father realized that, mm. <laughs> Something has changed. They don't want to be to be scored anymore. Uh, no, 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 no. Realize that no, my daughter has changed. You know, she's not no more bringing mm -hmm. the, you know, the letters. And he was so proud of me. Mm -hmm. um, my whole life, my my aim and my ultimate goal, and still is, to make him proud. Mm. Was his passing a hard one? For ah, you? it was tough. It was tough. I remember fourth. 4th August 2005, mm -hmm. I was writing my last paper and then early in the morning I had a call. He had been sick. I had been told that he, had been, he was sick and he was in a coma. Mm -hmm. And that dawn I had a dream, you know, I saw him lying down looking very fair mm -hmm. and as I approached he turned his face. So around 6 a.m. when my sister called, I just knew he was gone. But it was tough. Mm -hmm. It still is tough. It still is. I go through so many things and I think what would dad have said you know because I don't know if I've told you the story before the first time I appeared on on the morning show mm. you know breakfast show then first the 13th of February 1997 I didn't know I was going to be on the on, on, on set mm -hmm. I was supposed to be a floor manager mm -hmm. so I came on set and I went home my dad was so excited every telling everybody then the Monday, a magazine comes out and describes me as beautiful enough for the set, but not intelligent enough. Oh, I cried. Oh, my goodness. I cried so much. And my dad said, you know what? If you should get another opportunity, you will go and you prove to them Amazing. that you are very intelligent for the show because you weren't prepared, you know. So that's when he gave me my, what has become my mantra, my go-to quote mm -hmm. and encouragement. Said so the best form of revenge is to succeed. He said, you go back and you succeed. And what are some of the you know, lessons that have shaped you mm. into the person that you are now? Again, my father taught me humility. Mm. He always reminded me not to think that um, I'm entitled to anything, that whatever, apart from him and my mother, whatever anybody does for me, mm -hmm. it's a bonus. And then he also taught me to be kind. He said he changed my name to Gifty because he wanted me to be a kind person. Wait, he changed. Yes. So, hey, you are the first to get me to he mention changed. this name. <laughs> we want to hear that. When I, I, my original name, the name he gave me was Nancy. Nancy. Hmm. And then I think he said when I was just about one year, okay. he realized that I would give, I was very kind. I was just giving, mm. I said, no. Gifty. Gifty. Amazing. He changed my name to Gifty. I'm not surprised that I looked up to you. Our well, stories <laughs> seem very similar. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I didn't. I didn't know. I never knew that you had a name change. Yeah, I had my know, name changed. Yeah. As well, yeah. Nancy. Nancy. Yes. So you would have been Auntie Nancy. Auntie Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's good. Yeah. It's good. Um, so, right. so then one of the things that you know you yeah. learned from, from childhood, childhood was yes, being, to be kind, kind, to be, mm. you know, to also have good human relation. And my father taught me confidence. Mm. Ooh, mm. it because I didn't come from a very 
well-to-do background okay. and where I grew up in Tema. All my friends went to international school. I went to Saito, mm -hmm. government school. Mm -hmm. by number one? Number, come to the number one primary and middle school. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I went. My friends went to Datu, Desk, and, you Creator. know, Creator, um, to my parents, and uh, this side two girl. And now close from come to you, number one, and then go to Datu to mm -hmm. go and wait for Cynthia. Then we'll go to Desk, and then we'll go to my parents. Work you <laughs> Hustler. <laughs> yeah, and, and for those who don't know, it's not it's not a straight route. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. you're going to different communities. I'm telling you. Interesting. Yeah. And so what was your relationship with your siblings like, you know, back then as a child? We had very good, mm. you know, relationship. You know, my big sister, who is also like a big sister to your sister mm -hmm. now, Mama, was like my mother. You know, she she would just, she, and she still mothers me. Mm -hmm. um, then the first of the girls, um, who's auntie, um, we call Auntie Tina now, she's also now um, representing my mother. We had, she would be there, you know, take care of me. My brothers pampered me, but they used to bully me <laughs> because I was daddy's spy. Uh -huh. I was always, always gossiping to daddy, mm -hmm. you know, and they would eat my food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so we, we had a very close-knit family indeed yes indeed. yeah how was your confidence interpreted as a child ha huh, that one i was too assertive too mm. outspoken um too known all over the place yeah. you know mm -hmm. all sort of things were uh, said about me i mean but my dad always told me that no this is you mm -hmm. i want you to be out there mm -hmm. i want you to go for gold you know, so when people were playing with dolls, I would play with, you know, use um, milk tin, um, milo tin and all mm -hmm. that to make cars and play chaskele. Right. Some of these people, they don't know what chaskele is. <laughs> they <laughs> they don't. Chaskele <laughs> and stuff like that, you know, do the alokoto with the boys. You know, my father gave me the room mm -hmm. to be whatever, whatever I want to be. And... His condition was that whatever you decide mm -hmm. to be, you must be the best mm -hmm. or among the best. Mm -hmm. You must excel in it. Indeed. Indeed. That, that, that was the only caveat. At that young age, mm. did you always uh, look ahead to being a journalist? No. It wasn't the thing for you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> I never even understood what journalism was all about. Uh -huh. You know, I, gr growing up, I was trying to find my feet. So whatever looked like, looked prosperous successful uh -huh. that's what i want to be where the at money a point, is yeah exactly <laughs> at a point i saw the customs officer well dreaded with the ones who had it cast i wanted to be a custom officer mm -hmm. then the clearing agent started coming now i always mention his name because he was very good to me growing up now honorable carlos Ahinkra. we all call bra carlos and you know so i wanted to be a clearing agent mm -hmm. and then i wanted to the final was i wanted to be a public relations officer mm -hmm. because then they also started using the peugeot, peugeot yeah. cars and yeah. you know stuff so i wanted so i went to gij in the intention to be a public relations officer mm -hmm. but somehow every step of the way getting to gij they kept telling me, you'll be good with journalism. You'll right. be good. So the letter came and it gave me admission for journalism. Let's talk about your days at Infantsman. Ooh, great days. I did seven years at Infantsman. Mm. Yes, I was part of everything. I've always been this um, person who very confident, very bold mm -hmm. and involved in everything. Um, I was part of almost every club in school. We started Wildlife Club in school or when I was at um, Fansman. I was part of Debaters Club. I wasn't too well, good. Not, really? Well, no, wasn't you too weren't good. too good? No, no, I was no, going to no, say I'm not surprised. No, no, no. I had to be there. It's just <laughs> I was part of the athlete and all because we could go. We would go for jogging at um, Salt Pond to go and buy kinky. Mm -hmm. I was a horrible, you know, athlete. I'll be the last. So they moved me to the D Day event, the Jama Group. Uh -huh. And I became leader of the Jama Group. Okay. And I became entertainment prefect mm -hmm. as well because I was always a people's person. Yeah. And so from Infantsman, that's when you went to GIJ? From Infantsman, mm -hmm. I wanted to go to tech. It was tech or suicide. I wanted to do land economy. <laughs> tech <laughs> or suicide? I'm telling you. I picked just <laughs> one form for tech. Okay. Again. Because I saw people who did land economy mm -hmm. and architects in the area doing well. So I wanted to do, you know, architecture or land economy. Mm -hmm. That one. So I was at tech for a whole semester. Wow. 
right. trying to get, I'd never. So there are people who thought that I was a tech. No, I was in, I never did. Okay. I was staying in Africa. I was patching oh, uh, Africa right. ball. Even yeah. though you were not a student. No, I was patching for a whole semester. They went, they go for lectures. I'll go and sit at the administration block. Doing what? Waiting. I want admission. I can't imagine and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And at a point when I knew I wasn't getting, I didn't know how to come back home because all my friends, colleagues, had gone to the university. Yes. And you were waiting for your chance. I was chance. waiting for my chance. But fine. So when the semester ended, we had to come home. I, I didn't got sick. I was admitted at Tema, then Bengali Hospital. So I was just there treating all sort of thing. One day, I spoke to the doctor and then said, no, you will have to go home. So my dad came to see me. And the doctor explained that he thinks it's you know, anxiety and, right. you know, all sort of mixed emotions. That's what. So I said to my dad, don't worry. One day I'll marry a doctor mm -hmm. and they will call me Dr. Mrs. So don't <laughs> worry. So, so what did your dad think you were doing in school? My dad knew, knew that I was trying to, yeah. You were trying he knew, to get he knew that okay. I was trying to get okay. admission. Yeah, he knew that. And then so when I said that to my dad, he looked at me. I saw a tear in his eye and he said, don't worry. You'll be great one day. Amazing. I believe in you. I know Amazing. you'll make me proud. Amazing. I didn't believe it then. But you I said, didn't. okay. But I didn't. I couldn't see beyond my condition and mm -hmm. my situation there. Mm -hmm. But I just said, okay. So in the book when I wrote it, I said, only, not only did I become great, great. but I'm, carrying, I'm still carrying your name. Indeed. That's one of the reasons I decided to keep my name. Mm -hmm. Do on paper, I'm Mrs. Sinti Misa. Mm -hmm. But I decided to keep, to keep your the name. gift to auntie. And he spoke into your life. Oh, he did. At that moment. He did. The power of he the did. tongue, isn't the it? The power of the tongue, yeah. yeah. Now, one of the things, that's one of the things my father did. Always spoke positive. Mm -hmm. Who's tell you, for your good, not your goods. Anytime I speak about my father, I have goosebumps. Mm -hmm. So people wonder why I do um, what I do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as being raised by a man. Mm -hmm. It's because I tell people, when you know better, you do better. Yeah. My father wasn't well educated, but because of the, how he was raised and the upbringing, mm -hmm. he was well read. I think he went to up to middle school. Right. That, but my mother wasn't educated. Mm -hmm. My mother was raised to be that as a woman, so you have to support the husband, yeah. you have to do business, so there's that. Yeah. So my mother really didn't understand my desire to go to school and all that. So mm. there was always conflict. But thank God for wisdom. Yeah. Unfortunately, I really understood her just two or three years before she died, that she didn't know any. She was just trying to get me to understand mm -hmm. and become what she was raised to be, to be. socialized to yeah, be, yeah. you know. Did it affect your relationship with her? It did, it did. Okay. For a very long time, you know, we didn't have a good, I had, you know, how about certain sentiments, like, but when I understood her, you know, I you realized that, go. yeah, then I, I thank God that she also said to me that she's proud of me before she died. You know, before she died, she was called Mami na Nibawo TV. Mm -hmm. She used to live at Mankesim. So she was always excited. You mm -hmm. know, she, she really, I'm glad she got the message. She understood why I was trying to do all right. that I did right. before she died. What we'll do now is we'll take a very quick break. Stay with us. Rush, 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 rush. Hello, my friends. My name is Calcate Toothpaste. Wow. I was made to be gentle on your gum, but protected. I will protect your teeth from cavity, make your teeth whiter, stronger, keep your mouth fresh all day. And best of all, I'm strawberry flavored. So put on a smile and try me. That's amazing. Just try me. That's my job. If you say so, jump on my brush. Make your teeth stronger, chicky chicky whiter, chicky chicky stronger. Yay! You did it! I'm glad you like your new toothpaste. Don't forget to brush both day and night. Girl Kids, happy smile. Welcome back to the PL Show. Today is a very special edition of the show because we have somebody who does this better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue our conversation with Ohini Yuri. And so you didn't go to tech? No. You felt ill? Yes. You got better? Got better. And what did you do? I went to hustle. <laughs> <laughs> 
those days they used to have trade fair, mm -hmm. you know. So, so I became a sales girl for um, it's a Swanica. I think it still sells cars. And during that period, I met um, two young guys mm -hmm. called the Maldimas, yeah, David and Michael. Okay. They used to do wood carvings, you know, and um, I became intrigued by what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, so after the trade fair, they said, listen, if you want to work with that, that's fine. We'll do the work and then you will, you know, go around and sell. We'll hook it together with you. So what I was doing was I was sandpaper it right. and then lacquer it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll stick it on the paper after they had done the cutting and all that. Then we'll move from house to house and hook it. So right. we did that. So you so left Tema to yeah, um, yes, yeah, every the trade every day area, trade every fair. Day. No, no, Tishinungwa area, Tishinungwa okay. area every day. And so it, until I got admission to GIJ, mm. and for oh, I think most part of my first year, I was still doing it. How old were you at this time? This was um, twenty five, twenty six. Wow. Yeah, twenty five, twenty six. Wow. Yes. So you did that some paper for how long? For one year. For one year. Yes. Did you make enough money? I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even you remember. You were just happy to be I, making something. Yeah, I was happy, but I think, yeah, it was, and it, it helped me pay my fees. Mm. Yeah, GIJ. Yeah. I see. And even while at GIJ, you GIJ, you yes, I'll still, I'll still go. When I close, I finish lectures early, I'll just come there and go and continue. Or if my lectures are late, I'll go there before I go for lectures. How did you not feel like, well, uh, you know, I'm in a tertiary institution see, now, it's beneath me. It's because I of, go some it, because of the way I was raised. Mm -hmm. My father, taught me that there's dignity in hard work. You know, he kept saying, for your good, not your goods. Mm -hmm. And oh, and one of the things, this was way, you know, later, mm -hmm. after I started coming on TV. But my father made me understand that I'm the least among my siblings. Mm -hmm. I'm the youngest. Mm -hmm. So I should never, ever think that because of what I do or who I am or yeah. how I look, yeah. you know, I'm better off than any. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw my father hustle. You know, at a point, he became, and I've said this, but he became a security man at mm -hmm. a, Ever Ready so he could get money to pay my fees. I saw my father move from house to house, even his old age, trying to sell insurance mm. to get me to stay in school. Mm -hmm. So why do I think I'm better off mm -hmm. than my dad? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it didn't mean once I was earning something to also support what my dad was bringing. I was the Amazing. happiest girl, Amazing. you know, my pride. Look at me now to, yeah. today talking about it with pride, yeah. yes. you know. Yes. And I have the mark for it, the lacquer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. One of the, Ben, lacquer can be really hot. <laughs> it, it can, I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, it's very, you know, something do you even know what lacquer is? I think so. That's what shines the top of the wood, right? Yes. Yes. So then, first year, um, you had gone into a diploma program. Mm -hmm. Um, why didn't you do a degree program? Then we didn't have a degree. Right. Yeah, then GIJ no didn't have it. It was a diploma. It was yeah. just a diploma. It was just a diploma. This was 94. 94? Yeah. But you did the <laughs> diploma. Yes, I did the diploma. And then uh, during that period, you did some internship. Yes. At uh, GTV. GTV. I went to GNA. GNA, And then yes. went to Ghanaian Times, mm -hmm. where I met this amazing woman, Mrs. Lizzie from Asari, mm -hmm. who still is my professional godmother. She trained me the hard way, you know, but it was good. Mm -hmm. And now she, she's always, you know, in my corner with me. And before I went to a GBC. So I worked with GBC for um, seven years. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to go get a degree. And then I was told that, listen, with the diploma and the work experience, you can go ahead and get your, you know, master's, MA, straight. Right. So I went to wrote um, some entrance exams and I, I, I got admission to City University to do my master's training. In, in the yeah. UK? In the UK. Right. So yeah. then you you didn't go through the, um, you know, the routes that a lot of people... No, 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 I didn't go. I didn't do, I don't have a degree. But a know, bachelor's because degree, of the experience? Because of the experience. Mm. You know, like um, now, I think there's the university, the university is actually, even if you don't have a diploma, mm. I think with work experience yes. and all that, you can write it to go and get your bachelor's. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what, true. That's so what that's, that's the route that that's you That's the one, yes. Amazing. Yeah. What was studying in London like? It was fun. I was staying in a hostel. It was very engaging, you know, it, research based most of the time. And the fact that I had experience mm -hmm. in the working field made it a bit easier. My, I remember my lecturer, my journalism lecturer, just loved me is Christabel Kane. Mm -hmm. She's the first female anchor for BBC World. Oh. 
Wow. The BBC World. You know the BBC that we see? We see. Okay. Yes, BBC World. So she really loved me and we worked together. We did a lot of things together. She would consult me on various things when she needs to contact people across Africa. You know, we'll do that. I mean, after my, she wanted to be, she wanted me to be her TA. Oh. And I said, no, I had to come back home. So you came back immediately? I came back immediately. At the time, you know, yeah. going to London was a good thing. It was a very good thing. <laughs> so, but, but you let came me back. tell you a funny story. Mm -hmm. My first time in London was in, I think, 96, before my graduation mm -hmm. from GIJ. The whole idea was that I was going to stay, hustle, and then, you know, get through the system. Mm -hmm. Winter <laughs> brought me back home. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It was cold. One day, I closed from work. I got, I couldn't open the door. The door. Then there's a little girl next door, opened the door for me. I went in there, I was shivering. I thought I was getting pneumonia. I called Ghana Airways, booked my flight, and came back Immediately. home. Immediately. Immediately, and came back home. Had you been nursing, you know, thoughts of coming home already? Was that the strong? Yes, yes, I was missing home. I was missing my dad, mm -hmm. and... Um, but it wasn't that strong, you know, an air to come back home. Mm -hmm. But I, I just believe that, I believe in the hand of God. Right. The mysterious ways of God, Absolutely. you know. So I believe God wanted me to come. Mm -hmm. you no, know, because how it all went, Nanajua came and I said, I've called Ghana, I've gone away, so I'm, I'm no, going back. I was home. like, do you know what it takes to be here? Mm -hmm. And you're already in the system, you're working. So what's your problem? I said, I want to go back home. I see. My friends really laughed at me <laughs> and called me names. Return me. You know, I tell you. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, yeah. um, we, we've had quite a conversation about your childhood, and mm. I'm sure there's just a, a bit more we could learn mm, from right. that. Mm. But let's take a look at that same story mm. in pictures. Here's the Seed to Oak segment. Well, it looks good. <laughs> That's all I want to say. It looks good. But let's start with that car. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of a car was, was it? That was my first car. Very small car. Um, Daihatsu um, Charade. Is, is that a car brand? I'm just kidding. I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know. I bought it for 1 million Ghana cities. So now 100 cities. Mm. It belonged to my big sister. Mm -hmm. And I'd come back to London after hustling. Okay. I love red. And it was a red car. It wasn't, I didn't buy it from my sister red, but I went to spray red. Oh. And it was my claim to fame. Mm -hmm. When I sit in that car <laughs> and I arrive at GBC, <laughs> I had a special place that I'll park. Mm -hmm. And before you sit in the car, the conditions I'll give you, you don't do this in the car. You don't drink in the car. You don't... <laughs> Don't even breathe. <laughs> Don't even breathe when you sit in the car. That was my very first car. What happened to it? I had to sell it. Mm. When I thought that I'd come on top, you know, as you <laughs> say. I see. I, you know, we need to look for that car. I know, right? I think about eight, ten years down the line, I saw someone driving the car. Did you Did you engage the I person? mean, I, I tried to stop. <laughs> in fact, I chased the car. But, you know, because of yeah. travel, I, I, I lost the mm -hmm. track. And it was still looking good. Yeah, let's hope that it's not scraps yet. It, <laughs> we'll just hope that it's not scraps I yet. I hope so. We'll find it. We'll have to find it. Yes, car. we have to. Did I'm you have a name really... for it? Oh, you want to expose me now. <laughs> <laughs> you like that. <laughs> what was the name of your chick. car? Chick. Chick. It was called Chick. I see. Somebody Come and sit in my chick. Come and sit in my chick. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so most of my colleagues, mm -hmm. you know, in GBC, we have that term chick, chick. Mm -hmm. I used to hear it from the car. 
Right. <laughs> the C2O segment is brought to you by Kelkis Toothpaste. If you have children between the ages of two mm -hmm. and six years old at your home, the best toothpaste for them is Kelkis Toothpaste. It is strawberry flavored. It will protect their teeth and it will also uh, prevent cavity. Kelkis Toothpaste is a product of Samara Company Limited. They are producers of Sasso and it's also approved by the Food and Drugs Authority, which means that you can rely on the quality of this product. Our guest here is Oheni Yere, Gifty Auntie. So the picture in which you were wearing the leggings, you know mm -hmm. the the all these leggings goes yeah. under your yes, your, your, so there's your a foot. kind of band yeah. in your head. Yeah. It holds you, you know, it doesn't pull down. Where okay. were you? Who oh, that was in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. um, I was then interviewing the then mayor of Kumasi used to Nana uh, Akwesi. They used to call him uh, Okumkom. Mm. He was a very feisty, a strong, outspoken mayor of Kumasi. Um, this was in, I think, 99? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 99. So I was, you know, interviewing him. I had. Was it an exclusive? It was an exclusive. Mm. It was an exclusive. I mean, there were other, because there was a clean up exercise. Okay. Yes, and there were other journalists around, but I had a one on one with, with him. Yeah. Was that your shot to fame? Coming up next week with our special guest on the PO show. I've always been this person who wants to tell down told stories. She told me that, listen, you won't have it easy. You, you will never have it easy, so you better toughen up. She really nurtured me. She also helped build this resilient person that I've right. become.